In this video, I'm going to be explaining when I want to pass data between my components in React, whether in a particular situation I would choose context or whether I'd reach for a state management library, say like Redux or Mobix. So we're going to be taking a look at an example here that I have in Code Sandbox. And we have basically some data that we want to share. So over here on the right, I have likes and comments um, or the number of comments. And I am storing it in use state right here. And so basically this object I want to share between a couple components. Um, and how am I going to go about doing this? Right now I'm using context to do so. So I said data.context or I call it data context.provider and I'm passing my data. And now I'm directly putting my components here, but let's assume these guys could also be deeply nested in the tree and I wanted to get this data. Um, and that's most of the time what you'll do in a real application. Um, and so both of these components need access to this data and they're gonna be accessing it. Um, and now in this data, I can change the data by incrementing the likes or incrementing the number of comments um, by pressing these two buttons. All right, so let's look at the likes and comments to understand how this is going and why I chose context or why I shouldn't choose context for this situation. So in likes and comments, what I'm doing is I'm getting the likes and number of comments from the context and I'm just summing them and displaying them here. So we have four likes, three comments, and we get seven total. And this is great. Um, we are able to get the data from the context and display it here. And this is where I would say is a good use of context is in situations where the data does not change a lot or you're gonna use all the data in the context. Um, but where it breaks down is when you get into situations where um, maybe we stored all this data in the context, likes and num comments, and a component doesn't need everything inside of uh, this object. So for example, my likes component only needs to get the likes from the context. Um, and so it renders the likes, but it's also keeping track of how many times it has rendered. So you'll notice that it has rendered seven times. So whenever I increment the likes, um, see number of likes is 10, it's going to increment and also the number of times it's render, rendered will increase. But if I increment the number of comments, you'll notice this component is re-rendering, even though I have memo around it. And the reason for that is I am subscribing to changes in the context. And so when this data context changes, say the number of likes or the number of comments changes, um, it is going to cause a re-render in this component. And so this is where a case where I don't need all the information inside of the context. Um, and so I'm unnecessarily re-rendering. Now an application that is small or simple, this is totally fine, but if you get into situations where things are more complex and you have larger states um, and there's all kinds of things that need to be shared, you really only want to be re-rendering um, based on the things you want to subscribe to. So ideally this likes component only re-renders whenever the likes is incremented um, and it ignores all of their changes in the store or in the context. And so that's exactly what you can achieve with a state management library, at least very easily. Now note, we could also kind of do this with the uh, context. There's no reason why we can't break down this into maybe likes and num comments um, and split up the context or do some things to try to get it to where we achieve that goal. Um, but we are starting to have to write more code and this is where I really like to choose a state management library like Redux or like MobX or whatever you wanna choose um, where I don't have to write code where I am trying to only listen for when say one of the values changes in some data that I want. Uh, so if you know that stuff is static or if the stuff that the data I wanna access doesn't change a lot or I wanna grab all that data, I stick to context. So this is what it looks like. I chose to use easy peasy as my state management library, but uh, again, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. But you'll notice I rewrote the likes component um, to tap into the easy peasy store. And here I'm saying uh, I would like to get the likes value. And uh, because we're able to just tell it this library exactly which um, field that it wants, whenever I increment the likes, 
um, makes sense. Everything's incrementing and we see the number of renders increases. But what's new with this is now when I increment the number of comments, you'll notice the likes component is not re-rendering. So that is where I like to use state management libraries where say I have maybe a more complex state or I just have a lot of state where I'm wanting or needing to share it between different components um, all across my state tree um, or component tree I mean. And these values, I may only need a couple fields from different things and I don't want everything re-rendering every time the store gets a new value. And so things like Redux, easy peasy, allow you to just tap into just the values you want without you having to do a lot of work. Um, so yep, keep that in mind when you're coming, coming down to a solution or uh, need something and you are deciding between context or state management library.